am dr s padmapriya today i will be covering the lesson number 3 of microeconomics which is unit 1 of ugc net economics syllabus the title is decision making under uncertainty attitude towards risk i have already covered the first two lessons of microeconomics net economics syllabus now we will be proceeding to this particular lesson which covers decision making under uncertainty attitude towards risk first and foremost we must understand that there is a distinction between risk and uncertainty it was frank knight who first drew the distinction between risk and uncertainty according to frank knight risk is objective whereas uncertainty is subjective we can quantify risk but we cannot quantify uncertainty we cannot measure uncertainty so modern decision theory is based on this distinction uncertainty is a state in which the decision maker does not even have the information to make subjective probability assessments people will not go out of their way to gain something but they will go out of their way to avoid losses a condition of certainty exists when the decision maker knows with reasonable certainty what the alternatives are what conditions are associated with each alternative and the outcome of each alternative under conditions of certainty accurate measurable and reliable information on which to base decisions are available so we understand that there is two or three concepts which we have to understand very clearly the first is that in the case of certainty we are sure of many things whereas in the case of uncertainty we are not sure of many things but uncertainty involves a whole host of things which we cannot recognize at all risk occurs when the outcome of the situation is not certain but where the probabilities of the alternative outcomes are known or can be at least estimated so let us take the case of a tossing of a coin when a coin is tossed we know that we cannot be certainly getting only head or certainly getting only tail but definitely we know that either tail or head will appear but both cannot appear simultaneously so we can get only one outcome head or tail so risk is when we know the probabilities of the alternative outcomes but the outcome is not certain so that is risk now coming to the point of uncertainty it means that we have to handle a whole host of unknown information now let us come to the concept of game apparatus in decision theory the strategy concept the pay off matrix the minimax approaches appear in decision theory however there are fundamental differences between problems of game theory and the problems of decision theory in the case of zero sum game there is a major element of predictability in the behavior of the second player the second player can be counted to use any strategy which will reduce the first player's pay off so in another uh, way we can understand the whole thing is that when there are two players in a in a zero sum game with two players the second player is definitely not wanting to have the first player win so he will do anything or he will do any strategy or he will adopt any strategy to make the first player lose however in decision theory the second player is not an opponent in the case of game theory the second and the first player are opponents they don't want each other to win whereas in the case of decision theory the second player is often nature and nature is not enemy it is often not a real opponent as such so an important assumption in decision making is that the player can describe his problem in terms of a pair of matrix so in decision theory we have to understand that a player can describe his problem in terms of a pair of matrix then you have maximin criterion the maximin criterion was first suggested by abraham wald it is also known as wald criterion it takes a pessimistic approach and assumes that the worst will happen then you have maximax criterion it is a decision well suited to the temperament of a player who considers only the best price offered by any strategy and is blind to any contingencies the player chooses the gamble whose first price is the highest no matter what the dangers are 
so here the player wants to get the first prize and he will suffer for that he is willing to take any danger then you have the mini max regret criterion the maximum payoff from a particular state of nature is subtracted from the payoff actually achieved then we have the hercwigs criterion the hercwigs had proposed that a weighted average of the maximum and minimum payoffs of each strategy is employed as a decision criterion then you have laplace criterion laplace or bayes criterion explains as to how the decision maker in the absence of any information may decide to assign equal probabilities to all the possible occurrences decision making under risk under a state of risk the decision maker has incomplete information about available alternatives however he has a good idea of the probability of outcome for each alternative managers must determine the probability associated with each alternative on the basis of the available information and his experience decision making under uncertainty the manager does not possess complete information about the alternatives and whatever information is available may not be completely reliable modern approaches to decision making under uncertainty there are several modern techniques to improve the quality of decision making under conditions of uncertainty one is risk analysis the second is decision trees and the third is preference theory what is risk analysis risk analysis is where the managers analyze the size and nature of the risk involved in choosing a particular course of action risk analysis involves quantitative and qualitative risk assessment risk management and risk communication it provides managers with a better understanding of the risk and the benefits associated with the proposed course of action the decision represents a trade off between risk and benefit then you have idea of decision trees they are considered to be one of the best ways to analyze a decision A decision tree approach involves a graphic representation of the alternative courses of action and the possible outcomes and the risks associated with each action. Tree diagram depicts the decision points, chance events, and the probability involved in various courses of action. His techniques of decision making allows the decision maker to trace the optimum or optimal path of action. Then you have preference or utility and theory. According to this approach individual attitudes towards risk vary some individuals will take small risks they are called risk averters some individuals will take big risks they are called gamblers statistical probability associated with various courses of action is based on the assumption that decision makers will follow them top level managers usually take lot of risk the attitudes towards risk vary with events with people and with positions there are two approaches to estimate the probability of decision outcomes one is called deductive approach it is also called a priori measurement then you have statistical analysis it is called posteriori approach thus all business decision problems have common characteristics such as a decision maker a alternate courses of action or strategies then you have events or outcomes and then consequences or payoffs so basically we have decision maker who takes action and every action or strategy will in involve certain outcomes or events and then you have payoffs now the important person who was associated with the great decision making theory was herbert simon he was awarded the nobel prize in economics for 1978 for his pioneering research into the decision making process within economic organizations So Herbert Simon says that in a complex world businessmen lack enough information to make decisions that maximize profits they therefore merely seek to reach satisfactory targets so according to simon decision making is the heart of administration simon rejected the economic man concept of the new classical economists and gave the concept of administrative man in its place The administrative man looks for a course of action that is satisfactory or good enough. His decision making theory continues to be influential. Thus we come to the end of this chapter on decision making under uncertainty attitude towards risk. Thank you.